So the intros. Um, I, I want a little audience participation this morning. Um, not, it won't take very long. But uh, I wanted to first sort of, for you who may not have seen um, exactly who's involved, to put names to faces. Um, and so, Sebastian, where are you? Can you stand up, please? So Sebastian is, I'm sorry, you should bow. Um, Sebastian works uh, at Microsoft. Uh, he's the guy on the team that's left. And so we all have to really thank him for, uh, for really putting out all that code that he, that he does on a regular basis. Uh, Bertrand? Hi, I'm the guy who left. He's the guy who left, but he's an original uh, Orchard founder uh, and then went on to find, uh, found his old company, Noisette, that um, you should ask him about if, you, uh, if you'd like to make things, if you're a maker. He's got uh, excellent components, my little plug there for you. Um, Sip Sipka, where are you? you stand up, please. Sipka, otherwise known as uh, SFM uh, Skywalker, is that right? That's right. He's, uh, he's your local Jedi Knight. Um, also the founder of Orchard Market. Piotr. Piotr is from Prologence and also a board member. So there are five uh, members of the board uh, of, the, of the committee for, for the community. So Sebastian, Bertrand, Sipka, Piotr, and, and then myself. And Zoltan. Where are you? Zoltan uh, from Lombic, uh, also a, a, a very active uh, member, both on the, on the community meetings that we have every week that I um, invite you all to join us. Uh, we have them uh, via, video, via video conferencing, so everyone is welcome to these weekly meetings, by the way. And Nick, Nicholas Main from Mainframe Computing. He was a board member all last year, very active member as well. He's on every week. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for coming. This can't be put on, obviously, without sponsorship. Um, and so I want to you know, thank uh, Windows Azure Group um, for, for being really a very generous sponsor that helps us all be here and have, have the kind of event that, that we're put on. And Prologence, um, they are, are sponsoring uh, tonight's evening. So thank you very much. Um, and then also Lombic uh, was very generous in making these t-shirts. So you should all have coins that we'll uh, use after lunch. Don't use them at lunch. Use them after lunch and we'll switch them out for your t-shirts. Um, and then Noisette and I work at a company called One Stop. We're an e-commerce full service uh, shop based in California. And uh, we're not only very active, but uh, also participating in uh, putting this event. So Harvest. How did we get here? So Orchard has now been around for a couple years. And uh, last, about a year and a half ago, when I uh, started uh, getting involved um, in, the, in the project, um, I felt it was time to maybe gather a few folks around and really start a conference and really generate uh, a community around it that goes beyond you know, uh, forums and asking questions and, and uh, putting these a conference like this together. So we started with a conference last year in Santa Monica, California, and we had about 70 attendees. Um, which is a pretty fantastic for a first-time conference. Um, but I'll share a couple stats with you um, about who's in this room. So we reached out to the community when we put on this conference. And as you can see, there were, there's nine different language sites um, that put up the, the widget that we asked them so they get the message out. Um, and it's really nice because, by the way, we don't control, I personally don't control any of these sites. So it's just basically reaching out to your community, asking for some help and getting the word out, and, it's, and it, it is really um, fantastic, the response you get. Then we reached out beyond the Orchard community, and friends at CMS Wire put up an article for us. Um, MSDN uh, Belgium uh, put out some information, as well as, as France. And what was really um, fun, for at least for me, to see is um, Geeks MS was willing to put up a, a banner for us, which I'm hoping is going to play. Nope, a little technical difficulty. Try one more time. It's a really dumb little thing that I wanted to show, but anyway, it did work? Okay, that's great, because it doesn't show up here. Anyway, I got a kick out of it to be able to go to Geeks MS and see Orchard up there right next to a Windows Azure's banner, so I thought that was a really nice thing to, to have come out. 
So, who's here? Who's in the room today? Well, we've got 75 plus attendees. A couple people got a little bit uh, blocked, unfortunately, uh, by the French strike, or some of you struggled to get here. But we still managed to get uh, over 75 attendees, which is really, um, has really nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with you. Um, and with, with that in mind, I'm going to basically kind of go through a little bit about the, the different um, countries that are represented here. And I ask that as we go through them that you just quickly stand up, take a look around. I think it's really good for you to be able to see who from your uh, region or country is, is here that you may not know. And this is really the way you start to see what your local community is and who you can reach out in your local community. So from the Netherlands, stand up. Probably the biggest contingent here. That's pretty cool, guys. Denmark. We have a Dane in the back. Thank you very much. Hungary. Two gentlemen from Hungary. Sweden. There we go. It doesn't matter if you're one, it's a start. Belgium. All right, the drive wasn't too bad, right? Or the train? Italy. Very good, guys. Ah, okay. A country, fellow countryman. Spain. All right. So we've got four continents represented here. So we've got Africa, Europe. I'm not done with the countries yet. I'm not done with the countries yet. This is just a little break. <laughs> Africa, Europe, North America, and uh, Asia. India. Jay came all the way from Bangalore. <laughs> South Africa. We, uh, Samuel and the other team. From the US. UK. Oh, look at that. That's more than I thought. That's great. France. There we go. Greece. A Giannis in the back there, everybody. Portugal. Beatrice. Ah, there's a couple countrymen there. There you go. Germany. There you are. Poland. Four guys back there. Excellent. Canada. So 17 countries. I think you guys all deserve a big round of applause. That's really, really pretty fantastic. <laughs> 75 attendees plus four continents, 17 countries. What does that look like? There you go. That's the start. That's the start of local communities around the map. And why is this important? Well, community, because it's yours. The community is all yours. What you want to do with it, how you want to generate it, how you want to grow it, it's all in your power. So what are some things that we can do to grow the community? Well, finding others to help foster, build, and share the responsibility. It's very difficult to do it by yourself, and it's a big commitment. So I really encourage you all, if you're interested in growing communities, to reach out. There are more interested people than you know. Um, it's quite fascinating to see how many people reach out and are interested in the project but they really just need and are looking for somebody to, to basically raise their hand and, and to start to lead in their area. So you can build a local a country or language site as you saw we have, uh, actually we have 11 different country sites and a, a gentleman from Brazil just reached out and he's gonna be putting up uh, a Brazilian site um, and he's got a pretty large network of, of .NET developers, about 8,000 people on his list. So that should be going up relatively soon as well. Um, we encourage you to do that in your own country if you, um, if, there, if there one doesn't exist at this time, or get involved with the one that does exist. Uh, blog about what you're doing with Orchard. I mean, a lot of you guys are very active. If you're doing something with Orchard, that may not be everything that you do, but when you are doing something with Orchard and you're interested in something in particular, blog about it. Um, and there are other blogs that you can post that too. Repost articles you find and like. Get the word out. Obviously tweeting. Another thing that we encourage people to do is to schedule regular meetups. Again, it doesn't matter how often. What matters is that you just do it once in a while um, and get some type of regular cadence. Um, inviting people to join you in your local community. Well, we've already done this several times. Sebastian has come in via video conferencing and for an evening where a bunch of people get around pizza or whatever it is, it is that they are, are choosing to, to share food or drinks that night, 
and we'll, we'll participate and help you uh, with that night. We can either help you plan it and or come in via video, video conferencing. We're available 24 seven, more or less. Build a project, something you're interested in. And again, it doesn't have to be a module, it doesn't have to be a theme, it could just be and anything involved with the community. Get together and do something that, of, of common interest, extend something, use, use a, a different framework to tie into it. And lastly, I'd really encourage you all to give back and encourage others to do the same. So what I hope you guys get out of this is that, well, you'll inspire each other, you'll share your passion this week, and let's build something together, because this is what it's all about. So thank you very much for being here. I want to talk a little bit about the past, how, how we got here, how, how we built this uh, amazing community. And I want to start with the very first version. Has, have any of you used version 0 0.1? <laughs> there he is, the guy who downloaded 0 0.1. <laughs> well, 0 0.1 was a very important version of our chart because it laid the foundations uh, for what we built uh, later. And I really believe that laying the right foundations was the, mo the most important thing we did. The, the rest was kind of um, taking it from there and uh, building on it. But the foundations were very, very important. It's something that we cared a lot about, that we put a lot of thinking into. And I think it kind of shows because today they're still there and there is not a lot that we had to actually remove and redo uh, in the platform. And in particular, the content parts and type system is, it kind of was the, the initial idea for building our chart, this idea that content is built from um, parts that are the exact right size. They are somewhere between properties and full objects and they are very easy to compose, and th that idea of composition is present throughout the architecture in our chart. Uh, we already had pages in the very first version. We had blogs, um, we had comments, we had the first version of the navigation menu. It was on only one level at the time. It was kind of limited. We had themes already. We had users and roles. So all the, um, the important foundations were there, but the most important uh, foundations were content parts and types, which we are still using today. But they didn't have the metadata at the time. When you wanted to create uh, content types, you actually had to compose those parts from code. Uh, we also had permissions, and well, as you can see, surprisingly, 0 0.1 actually was, had a lot of features. We, already, we even had uh, spam protection at the time and uh, support for live writer. Then uh, we had version 0 0.5, which uh, improved on those foundations by including uh, the idea of modules. We also had the data migration framework that appeared then. We uh, started the gallery, which we still have today, which is kind of a problem because it it, this is something that we should actually replace and I, that I think we will replace uh, shortly. Um, we had multi-tenancy introduced in that version, which enables you to host your websites uh, for lower costs. We had search introduced, the command line, which is, that was a very uh, important thing to us because we really believe that uh, uh, a good command line is the right way to automate uh, building websites. And we had support for Azure, our beautiful sponsors today. In vers version 0 0.8, we introduced a very, very important uh, concept, which, which was shapes. Uh, shapes are the idea that to create uh, UI on the web, dynamic objects are much better, much more efficient than uh, statically typed models. So we replaced the idea of a static type model with a dynamic object that 
uh, you use to uh, model what you are going to display. And this, uh, I believe, is, is a very important concept that, that we all use and love uh, today, and that, that is making our chart what it is. Uh, with shapes, you get placement, um, which is a concept that was kind of a placeholder at the time, but it's still there. Uh, we should probably think in the next few versions about uh, replacing it. Thank you. We also introduced Razor, which was a very, very young technology at the time. Uh, we were, I believe, some of the first users of, the, of that technology. We started actually using it before it was out and uh, so that we were ready at the same time. Uh, we introduced widgets, notifications, the theme machine that we all love or hate, depending on where you stand, uh, but which is a, a, a good way to start a theme. It was the idea. It was, the idea was to have uh, a starting point, a good starting point for a theme. Uh, we introduced pagination, which is kind of important. And that was it for 0 0.8. 0 0.9 introduced features, 0 0.9 is kind of the version that, um, that has the, the features that were removed. For example, medium trust, uh, which gave us a lot of headaches. And uh, it was very important to lots of people, but that's something that since then has become um, a thing of the past, really. And uh, we've removed it on version 1.6, I believe. Uh, so there is no longer support for medium trust now. We also introduced a, a feature called lists in that version, and that was a mistake as well. <laughs> we introduced it at the time because, well, pretty much our management wanted us to have a way to uh, handle collections of content items, and we kind of put this together pretty fast. Uh, it was too fast, and it wasn't the right arch architecture. That, that is one case where um, we accepted to build a feature before we were ready to build it. And in retrospect, that was a huge mistake. So we should always keep to our values, keep to our ideas, and make sure that what we build is something that we build for the long, long term. That is a foundation for something rather than just something that we throw together fast just to have it. So those two features are gone. So 0 0.9 was pretty much for nothing. And then we had version 1. And version 1 was pretty much bug fixes on version 0 0.9, so we didn't have any, fe any new features. We did have some new features in 1.1. We did the admin redesign. Um, we introduced recipes. Uh, we are going to have a, uh, a couple of talks that are going to show how to use recipes. They are a very important concept, but one that is underused, I think. Uh, with recipes come import-export, which is a feature that is actually built on top of recipes. Recipes was a foundation block that we built for import-export with other features in mind. So that's a good example of an architectural block uh, that, that we thought with the long term in mind. The media picker appeared, well, the modern media picker. We had a media picker before, but it was kind of crappy. Uh, Warm-up, we had lots of concerns from our users at the time about performance, and warm-up was a way to uh, improve on, on performance, on startup performance, which was the biggest problem. And it's still there today. Shape tracing, I mean, come on, you guys love shape, shape tracing, admit it, right? Everybody loves it. Uh, then we had 1.2. 1.2 was, again, a bug fix release and didn't have any new features. Uh, then we had 1.3. And as you, you may have noticed that the numbers, the version numbers are getting bigger on those slides. Uh, the, the size of the version numbers reflects the number of times each was downloaded. So remember, 0.1 was very, very little. And here we, we are starting to get some serious uh, numbers here. Uh, now we are in the tens of thousands of downloads for each version. Um, 
we started to have RSS everywhere, so every time you have a list in uh, Orchard 1.3, you have an RSS feed. Not everybody knows about that. It's kind of hidden in the meta tags uh, in the markup. Unless your theme surfaces it, it doesn't really show, but your RSS readers uh, know about that. I know that RSS is not so fashionable nowadays, but uh, we still love it. Uh, content preview. Markdown. How many of you use Markdown? Well, the rest of us, you should, you should take a look at it because it's awesome. Uh, online HTML editors pretty much all suck. So you either use something like LiveWriter to write offline or you put up with the, the crappy tiny MC or whatever you use or you use Markdown. And I encourage you, if you don't know it, to check out Markdown. It's a great way to get your, your contents formatted in a clean and manageable way. We introduced rules. Rules are another feature that is being replaced, but I don't think it's because, in this case, not because it was um, badly thought out, but more because now we have something a lot more awesome which is workflow and which is a feature of 1.7. So it was an awesome, an awesome feature at the time, but we have awesome uh, features now. Uh, forms. Uh, forms were a way to leverage the content type system for the front end and uh, enable you to, uh, to create online forms that gather data for you and that send emails and uh, feed into, uh, into uh, lists of, of data that you can then exploit. Um, forms were a feature that kind of eliminated the need for uh, a lot of external modules such as contact forms and stuff like that. And it's a perfect example of a feature that leveraged the content type infrastructure that we put into the very first version of our chart. And it's kind of a direct application of that architecture that just works. I mean, the work to make forms work was, you know, making that infrastructure that already existed, making it work on the front end. I'm not saying that there was no work in it, but uh, it was a direct application of what we already had. And I, I think that's something that is very important in our chart that we, we reuse the great foundations that we built. Tokens. Um, is another of those features that you really need to know about. Um, and then we are switching to version 1.4, which was a great version, one that really lasted for a long time and uh, that people loved. That's where we introduced uh, the new fields. Um, where is Antoine? Yeah, Antoine built a, a, a big part of that feature. Um, auto route, which was that was a really big deal. Uh, we replaced the um, static URL infrastructure that we had with something completely dynamic that enables you to really create very rich uh, URL structures. And as we all know, the URL of your contents is part of your UI now. So that was very important. Projections. You love projections, don't you? I mean, that is, that is one of those awesome features that, uh, that we actually stole from, uh, from other CNS that I'm not going to mention here. But uh, it, it's one of those features, yeah, Drupal? Okay, Drupal. We owe a lot to those guys. Uh, Drupal is another awesome CMS and we stole a lot of ideas from them, uh, shamelessly, because they were great, so we thought, yeah, well, they had the good ideas, so why not reuse those good ideas? Projections is one of those. Uh, 1.5 had uh, admin placement, which is a feature that would be quite great if it worked a little better. So we've had a lot of problems with this feature. But it, yeah, I, that's one of those where I think we should, we should replace it actually with something awesome at some point. Uh, we introduced CAPTCHA in this version, which um, 
is very important for all of us. We deal with spam uh, daily. It's the only thing that works against spam, really. Item permissions was a feature that a lot of people were asking for. Hierarchical navigation, that one was very important too. We had at least three modules uh, plugging that, uh, that, that hole uh, before we introduced that. They are still there. They are still introducing uh, more elaborate uh, navigation features, but at least out of the box now you can create a hierarchical uh, navigation structure. Uh, search in the admin, which is very important for those of us who manage large sites and uh, need to find stuff very fast. Uh, custom forms and the forms API. Uh, the forms API is another hidden, hidden nugget uh, in, in Orchard. If you don't know about the forms API and you're an Orchard developer, you're missing out and you should check it out. It's a great way to build uh, forms from code. The content picker uh, is a good way to create relationships just from the admin UI. Um, and then we had 1.6, which is our current release. It's the latest. And it's probably the longest lived uh, release. We, it's been uh, out for something like nine months. It's the first time that, that we don't have a new release for so long. And the reason for that is that 1.7 is going to be awesome. Uh, in 1.6, we introduced uh, web API. So now you can expose uh, our chart features as uh, web APIs that can be consumed by other applications. Support for My MySQL. Database cache is now built in. Very important performance feature. Turn it on if you, if you haven't already. And now, 1.7, and those are projected sizes here. <laughs> and I'm expecting to get those numbers faster than we got, we got them earlier. We have workflow. Workflow is going to be, it's already great. How many of you are already using workflow? Yeah, about a dozen of you are. Uh, do we have a talk about workflows? Yeah. In, yeah, so all those, those features in 1.7 will be detailed in tomorrow's keynote given by uh, Sebastian. Um, and you're going to discover those features in, in more details. We, we now have, I believe, with 1.7, the best media uh, support uh, across all CMS. If you look at the UI, it might actually remind you of uh, things you've seen uh, here and there. We've actually looked at what the other guys were doing, in particular um, WordPress, and we tried to take the features that made the most sense and put them together. And I think it's absolutely beautiful what, what we have now in our hands, and we need to make the best use of that. The image editor is kind of part of, uh, it's, it's part of the, the media infrastructure. You can actually edit your images with, from, from within Orchard. Uh, in particular, you know, being able to crop images, to do some light uh, image edition is very useful for bloggers in particular. Taxonomy is one of those modules that kind of incubated outside of the core uh, for a few months. And we know now that this is a very solid module that we want in the core. So we took that module, we put it in the core. So now you get taxonomies out of the box. Output cache is now built in. That's yet another module that was incubated outside of, of the core and that we brought in because it should be useful to everyone and everybody should turn this on. Can't stress that enough. If you have any kind of performance issue with our child, Turn this on. Um, faceted search, that's going to be very important for commerce sites and uh, any site that has some structured data that needs to be searched. Threaded comments, not a big fan of this one, but apparently people like that. So we did it. 
And uh, which one did I miss? Oh yeah, C sharp scripting. C sharp scripting is taking advantage of the new uh, compilation features in uh, C in uh, .NET 4.5. And that enables you to do some scripting using the language that you use everywhere in the application, which is neat. The support in 1.7 is limited to a few new features. Uh, I think we are going to extend that in future versions to enable you to use C Sharp everywhere you can use uh, scripting uh, today. So for example, in layers, layer rules, you should be able to do that in C Sharp. Uh, and a few other places. <laughs> I don't want to say too much about 2.0 because we don't really know what's going to be in there. We know what we want to be in there. We want uh, support for document DBs to be in there. We, we are not exactly sure under what form, but we are at a point where we know that relational databases are not the best way to model uh, content data, and that document DBs would simplify things a lot. There are places in our chart where we could probably delete something like one third of the code that is there just by using a document DB, which kind of shows that we have an impedance mismatch today that we could remove. And that would make the platform easier, simpler, more performant. There are only, it's, it's, it would be a big win basically. And yeah, what's going to be in 2.0 is hopefully what you guys build. Uh, I would love to see very innovative modules such as, you know, we see in the Drupal world, for example. Uh, in Drupal, when you look at the most widely used modules, they are not in the core, they are actually, they have been built by the community, such as taxonomies, views, all those modules, uh, uh, even Autopath, um, all those modules have been built by the community, they've become universally used, and then some of them are being taken into the core. Uh, it would be really great if 2.0 was built that way. And 1.7 is actually uh, built, some, of, some parts of 1.7 are built that way. The media support, for example, uh, comes from you, from you guys in a large part. Uh, Sebastian did a lot, a lot of work over that, but, right? There is a large part of it that you seem confused. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll give some numbers. Lots of numbers, actually. Lots and lots of numbers. I'm going to drown you under numbers. I'm sorry. Uh, those are the number of downloads, but wait. Those are not the right numbers. Those are the numbers from September. Here are the right numbers. It's a nine months, nine months difference. Yeah, that deserves a post. More than half a million. Thanks. Lines of code from, so that was in September, and now it's a lot more. That guy has been busy, apparently. Number of contributors, we had 59, we have 84. That is very important. Congratulations to you, and thank you. <laughs> Gallery modules, we passed the 500 mark. And more importantly, we had two and a half million downloads. Do you want to make a guess how many we have today? Yep. In nine months, nine months. Close bugs, that's, that's kind of a big deal as well. I mean, we, we do have bugs. One time, a software developer whom I'm not going to name told me that his code had no bug. Right. Huh? Does it still work? Yes. Still, still in business, yes. Uh, forum messages, I really care about that one. Uh, and uh, we had 50,000, which was a lot of messages. Now we have 82,000. 
So more than 30,000 email, uh, well, no, form messages written by Sipke. <laughs> Most of them. Uh, Stack Overflow questions. We had 600 in September. Do you want to make a guess how many we have today? It doubled. Uh, Stack Overflow is a really good indicator. Uh, it's the tool that the whole industry is using. So if people go there to ask questions about your stuff, it means that your stuff is getting, getting uh, steam. We, we went from eight countries to 10. Um, that, that's the number of local communities that have a website, an active website. And this was the number of cultures we had where we had some localization. Now we have 36. I want to make a little comment here. Some of those really don't have a lot of strings that are being translated. And that's kind of a call to action. Um, if you want to participate in that, we have an online tool that is being uh, managed by uh, Benedek here. Um, ask him for a login and translate strings. You know, even if you do a couple of hours on it, you can get a few hundred strings translated and that, that always helps. Uh, all the translations are provided by the community. There, there are no professional translators working on that. Well, that unless they are willing to work for free on this, but uh, uh, it really comes from you guys, so please, please, please uh, go there and translate stuff uh, in your own, your own language. All right, so that's it for numbers. Um, the way we build this community is by making sure this community has a, a good heartbeat. Uh, we measure that heartbeat in, in two places, on the homepage, so if you blog, and I encourage you all to blog, uh, please send us emails. Uh, you can send email to me, and I, I will get your posts on the homepage. Uh, it's really important for everyone in the community and people who want to join the community that they can see that the community is active and producing content contents all the time. And that content is built by you. So uh, it needs to get on the homepage, and it's a good way for you to get some promotion for your, your posts. We have the weekly podcast. Uh, this is recorded every Tuesday uh, at noon Pacific time. If you can uh, participate in that, it's a great way to show your stuff. We do demos every week. You just have to show up and say, I have a demo, and there you go. You're going to be recorded, put on YouTube, and people are going to see your stuff, which is great. If you have a new website that you want to show, this is also the right, the right place to do it. Uh, our, our strategy from the start in growing this community has been to empower you, empower you guys and uh, telling you that you are the ones who are going to, uh, to grow the community. Um, and I made a call to action uh, in last September um, for people to take responsibility and create their own micro local communities that are seeds for, for external growth of this community. Uh, this is not going to grow from a central point. From a central point, we grow um, satellites, and those satellite communities themselves grow, and this is how we get to a, a good size, and how we accelerate this growth. So a few people have answered this call to action, uh, which I find really um, great and encouraging. Uh, Adrian Noble has taken responsibility for documentation, which doesn't mean that uh, you guys can't uh, participate. He's coordinating the documentation. The do documentation still comes from the community, as the rest does. Uh, Benedek has taken responsibility for localization. Uh, Ilan, of course, is organizing uh, the conference. And we also have some websites that have appeared and that are uh, building uh, and uh, contributing back to the community. And here I want to show them because they are really examples of businesses being built that give back to our community. Uh, how many of you work part-time on Orchard? Do part of their work on Orchard? That should be all of you, at least part-time. How many of you uh, make all of their activity uh, on Orchard? 
Okay, so this is, this is really encouraging uh, to see that, that some of you can actually make full-time business on Orchard. And I, from my experience, there is more demand than there, is, than, than there are people able to satisfy it. So uh, I encourage you to go out and try to find the Orchard jobs, and I, I believe you will find them. Uh, this is one example, this is Show Orchard. It's um, showcasing Orchard sites. If you have a site that you want to get on, on there, please contact those guys and, uh, and get it there. Uh, Orchard Prime, uh, same, same company actually. They are selling uh, themes for Orchard, high quality themes. Um, Bind Tuning is also um, providing a way to customize uh, high quality themes, so you can actually change the colors and some of the layout using an, an online tool, and then you get a, an, or, uh, an Orchard theme out of that. This is a new, uh, a new initiative from our Hungarian uh, friends over there. Uh, they are providing training and, and even certification. Certification hasn't begun, right? Not yet, but it will soon. Um, so training, resources, education around Orchard. So one more example of a business built on Orchard. And Orchard Market, which is uh, only beginning, but there, there's going to be great stuff coming from, uh, from that site. The idea here is to provide Orchard professionals the resources to build their business and grow their business. And this is it. Thank you very much.